when you went to church concerned the invisible, the what we called spiritual. But now you find out that a lot of the things that are active and impact on us are invisible, but they're called subatomic. And in order to understand how these things work, you get into a realm called quantum physics. And quantum physics is a study of people minds and thing minds, which creates a whole new thought process for us, because what are thing minds? We never considered before thing minds. I mean, people minds, each of you have a mind and you think. But now we get into quantum physics, we find out that the things that we didn't realize think, think. Like light. Light thinks. And that's impossible for you to accept that, that light thinks. Only because you don't understand quantum. But quantum says that light will decide when it has a choice, which is the best route to take. How? Because it has a consciousness. Regardless of whether you or I understand that, that's, the physicists tell us that. And so, not only if you consider that light thinks, then you have electrons that think. And electrons that think are not only outside in the universe, they're inside of your body. And this begins the, the old light and darkness, positive and negative, yin-yang, because in a nucleus you have an electron which is negative, a proton which is positive, and then you have something that doesn't have a charge, which is called a neutron. And all of these things are not only in the universe, but they're inside of you, and they think. And so the only difference between you and what's in the universe is you're attached to the body that you have. But once you separate and detach from that body, you're part of that cosmic whole and that cosmic intelligence. When you turn on your television set, millions of ghosts leave the tube and head out. Ghosts. I say that's ridiculous. Well, it's maybe ridiculous, but it's true. Each electron that exits from the tube to smack the screen, there's only one that does, but each of them, billions of them, have a ghost attached to them, and the ghost decides we're going to go to the left, going to go to the right, going to go up or down. And also, the amazing fact is that when you look at, or try to look at an atom, you immediately change it, just by looking at it. It changes simply by your observation. So, <laughs> these are amazing things, which finally in 19, I guess it was 1900, Max Planck was his name, I guess from Germany, discovered what we know as quantum physics, which throughout, see, like classical physics says that you'll have an answer to your question, and it will either be yes or no. But quantum physics says, the answer will be your experience. You have an experience. Gary Zukoff has wrote this book called The Dancing Wooly Masters. It's spelled W-U-L-I. And Wu Li is Chinese, and it means the movement of energy, but it also means enlightened. But the Wooly method, the, the teachers of, of this philosophy or science, whatever you want to call it, John, said so you don't teach quantum, and you don't study quantum, you dance with it. And that basically is your meditation, and, and that's why so many of us get so frustrated in meditation, because we're trying to study it, we're trying to figure out how to do it, but these masters say, no, you don't do that in meditation, you just dance with it. And when you go into meditation to dance, you should never lead, because you're the bride. Let the bridegroom lead you in the dance. Let the music play, let the sound swirl, and let the bridegroom who's inside of you, which is the Christ figure, just sweep you off onto this cosmic ballroom and dance. And it sounds a little uh, Disney-esque, but nonetheless, it's very beautiful and very true. See? I had a conversation, I was telling the folks uh, the other night, Tuesday night, I was telling him about a conversation with a friend of ours from New York City who's a Sufi Muslim. And we got into a lot of discussions about a lot of things, and he's very, you know, he's a wonderful person to listen to talk, as, as most of these Sufi Muslims are. 
And he said, you know, it is the mother in each one of us that is the fulfillment of our meditation. It's Pia Mater. And he says, even when you go to a wedding, think about it. There were two mothers getting married. The mother and the man and the mother and the woman. And they dance and they embrace. And he says, that's why they call it matrimony and not patrimony. It always has been that way because it's the wedding, the coming together of the mothers. So there's so many beautiful things. I mean, we know so much. We have a nuclear plant down here. We know so much about atoms. We know so much about all of these types of things and the power that atoms have and what they do and how they do it and so forth and so on. But in all of that, in all of the knowledge we have of the power, consider the fact that no human being, no human being has ever seen one. And, th and the things that they do, religious people will say, the devil did it. Well, they're saying the devil did it because they, th this unseen, invisible power. Well, Gary Zukov in his book said, if hydrogen atoms didn't do it, then maybe the devil did. <laughs> so, when we begin to understand that there is an entire source of energy and living intelligence that surrounds you, that the thinking goes on outside of you by thinking things, in addition to thinking people. Then you come to this point where we are in our, what we're studying now, and saying, hey, now that I begin to understand the uh, nature of the world, the earth, the universe, the cosmos, now that I begin to understand that everything that is within the universe has a consciousness and thinks, that atoms think, electrons think, light thinks, that everything then I, then I realize that I'm not separated from it at all because all of those things that are whirling around are inside of me whirling around. They're the same things. So then I, I start to say, maybe it's time then to look at, at these mysterious things written in, in scriptures and say, are they, are they speaking to me about a scientific truth that I can be part of, rather than some religious stuff that is simply going to coerce me into some kind of a tribal mentality. And so we came to the point where we're on the eve of announcing, I think October 23rd, they're announcing the next planet. That's what it says on the computer. So we're on the eve of the announcement. Albert